Hey everybody, I'm back again today to break down the trailer for Remnant 2. This is going to be a mixture of both my personal observations and a few points brought up in the comments of my last video. If you haven't watched the trailer yet, I highly encourage you to do so before watching this. Also, Bolt just released his own analysis video. He knows far more than I do when it comes to Remnant, so I definitely recommend checking out his video if you're interested. As is the nature for an unreleased product, there is plenty we won't know about it until it comes out. When it comes to scenes with completely new locations or concepts we haven't seen before in Remnant, I will try and keep my speculation as low as possible. After we see some flying creatures in a cluster of floating islands, presumably of root nature due to their color scheme, we cut to our first glimpse at a new set of armor. Visually, this kind of strikes me as a stand-in for the scrapper set from the first game. The design there inspires feelings of gladiatorial combat, while this new one seems more medieval, like the person wearing it should be carrying a huge sword. Which is exactly what we're shown when we cut to a rear view of the character with what appears to be a two-handed blade on their back. I say what appears to be because melee combat isn't shown off once in this trailer, so we'll have to wait and see if it is or not. Judging by the length of the handle though, my bet is on it being two-handed. We also get our first glimpse at a new long gun, which seems to be a scrap-inspired AA-12 shotgun. Then we get a shot of this character on a throne with some castle scenery in the background. A boss as we soon later see in the trailer. We then cut to Commander Ford, who's looking a little older than he did at the end of Remnant 1. He's giving a long stare at what looks like a map. If I had to guess, this is probably an idle animation of him in some sort of hub area. The other map in the background, plus the lamp atop the boxes slash dresser thing, are what draw me to this conclusion. He is also sporting a chest-mounted light that is also shown later in the trailer. This model is actually in the files of Remnant 1. I'm like 99% sure it goes unused in-game, I quickly replayed through the tutorial to check if it was anywhere, but I didn't manage to find anything. Let me know if I got this wrong though. I bring up this point because in one of the screenshots on the website and Steam store page, we can see another mesh that is in the files of Remnant 1 but goes unused. And this is referred to as the Flame Mace in the files of the game. I do believe however that these screenshots are from an older build, as the same character slash archetype is shown to be equipped with a different mace in the trailer. Moving on, we see a very beefy character with his spinal cord exposed. At first I thought this was one of the rat men from Raysom, but upon looking closer at the feet and hands of the model, they are very clearly humanoid. That and the mask he's wearing leads me to believe this is a buff version of one of the elvish characters that we see for the rest of the trailer. Judging by his body, wounds, impalements, and bondage alike, I think this could be a tortured prisoner of sorts. The markings on his body are probably for public shaming. As we see in the following scene, these people seem to be subjected to public torture and the like frequently. Next up is the aforementioned scene of an elven character being strung over an open fire. Judging by the amount of heads this executioner has hanging from their chain, this reinforces my belief that this is a race that has been under the heels of these enemies for a while now. The amount of cages and burning buildings is also concerning. Then we have this elf on a goat-like creature. I'm not sure if this creature is native to the location or if it's from Yesha. The little gilded parts around the horns are what make me think the latter is possible. This next segment is really interesting and raises a few questions for combat in the sequel. This enormous root monster looks like rays from the first game on steroids. He is shown striking down a platform the player is currently on. The player is then shown doing a hop down to a lower level and rolling to recover. This could be absolutely huge for arena design in Remnant 2. In Remnant 1, there wasn't any sort of jumping. When you walked off a ledge, you just fell and got staggered, took a bit of damage, or worst of all, died. It's hard to say if this will be something similar to Zelda where you have to run off a ledge to jump, or if the player can do so at will. The latter would be insanely game-changing. When the player is landing, you can see that the next platform after this one is at the same level as the one they left. Either something else happens in the arena to lower slash raise the platforms, or the player will have the ability to leap up. Either way, this level of verticality in boss fights seems absolutely phenomenal and I cannot wait to see more of it. As a final note for this scene, we can see a new handgun on the player's hip. It looks scrappy, I'm assuming to match with the huge hunk of metal they have on their back. And next up we see an enemy with a circular saw rushing down a player. I'm not sure if they're of elven descent or not, it's hard to tell. You can't really see their ears at all, it's kind of covered up by their hair and their hat. But let's just say it's enough for now. We then get a look at a second new armor set featuring a gas mask. They also appear to be using a new handgun. Perhaps archetypes this time around will start with different handguns? We just saw the knight player with one equipped, and as we see later, the final archetype is also holding a unique handgun. To me and many others, this scene evokes memories of Resident Evil 4 with the chainsaw men. The sequence here of the player being tackled to the ground will more than likely be a quick time event like the many other grapple moves from Remnant 1. 
We then cut back to the buff dude from earlier. Here we get a look at a brand new bow weapon being used by the gas mask player. I think this guy just wants a hug. He really seems like he could use the support. The next scene is very wild. A female elven giant appears adorned with symbols of the moon. Her chest even seems to be some sort of space, uh, thing. Perhaps she is the guardian of the elven planet? As we don't see any signs of root infection in any of the scenes of the location. We'll definitely have to see what she's all about when the game releases. These next two scenes take place in a series of floating walkways with other flying bits of stone all around. The first half has two points of interest to me. The first being this NPC trailing behind the knight and gas mask player with a dog. They were actually in the last scene too of the moon elf. I say NPC as the clothes slash armor they're wearing do not match what the third player is wearing later in the trailer. It could just be a player wearing a different set, and the dog could be the only NPC here, but we'll have to wait and find out. The second thing that sticks out to me are these statues of multi-armed figures. At first I thought these might have been of the Keeper's race, and therefore this would be the Labyrinth. But after taking another look at the exchange between the player and the Keeper on Earth, he only has two arms. The next logical thought for me was the Undying King, Eslin. He also has four arms and a fairly lanky body, just like these statues. However, they are kneeling, so it's a little hard to tell what their true height is compared to Eslin. You'll notice too that these statues also have a reverse pyramid on their heads. At first this struck me as a bit odd, but looking back at Eslin's design, we can see a very clear similarity, the symbol floating above his head. If you fought him before, or use the weapon you get from killing him, Ruin, then you know that this symbol represents the second life you receive while under its effects. It could all just be a coincidence, but we'll see. The second portion of the scene shows the three players looking over an open space with more floating rocks, a series of rings, and a large beam of light. I'm still getting Labyrinth vibes from this scenery. The floating rings remind me of the middle segment of the Labyrinth in Remnant 1 above the World Stone. The one note color Endless Skies also draw a similar comparison to the familiar location. Could this be someplace similar to the Labyrinth? We'll just have to wait for the game to come out. On the right here we can also see the third new set of armor. As later shots of the armor show, it looks very cowboy-esque. Coming up we have the three players walking up to simulations. We see some sword-wielding elite looking ones on the left and right, and two figures in the middle. The lower one is either veiled or facing away from the camera. We do get a nice close-up view of the top figure though. They seem to be a noble of some kind. Whether it's the Yation Empress or someone else, I'm glad we'll be engaging in and hopefully wrapping up their planet story. The next scene is very brief, but it sets a chilling tone for its short duration. We see a room full of elven children, all wearing blindfolds. Then there is this older female character. Her lips are sewn shut and she honestly looks pretty miserable. My guess is that she is the caretaker of these children, who have been orphaned from the conflict happening within the elven location. I'm also positive she herself is not an elf. Besides the facial structure being radically different than the children or the adults we saw earlier in the trailer, her ears don't appear to taper off to a point like a typical elf. As for why the children are being blindfolded, I am unsure. Could be related to the creature we see in the next scene. This terrifying abomination's entire torso is a giant mouth, looking similar to the gaping dragon from Dark Souls 1. For a brief glimpse, we also do see some more people in the background. They seem to have a similar body structure to the strung up elf we saw earlier. And judging from this next scene, it seems the elves might be turning into these abominations. Here we see some elves in what appears to be a hospital slash asylum. Maybe similarly to the elves on Corsus, there is a parasite these other elves are also dealing with. In the next two scenes, we see a jester type character and then a larger gentleman, presumably still within the elven location. Not sure where they fit into the bigger picture, but I'm definitely getting some unclean one vibes from the second guy. Next, we cut to some root creatures with long tentacles coming out of the back of their heads. The location seems to be a mega root infested area with a huge central core. Then we're shown a scene of Earth on the surface. As we can see, the planet is healing after the defeat of Harsgard. All the trees that were dying or red before are now lively and green. We then see Ford passing the player a body light, which makes sense as we did see the gas mask player earlier have one equipped. The next scene shows Clementine from the 2923 DLC using her powers against the root. I am definitely excited to see her make a return to the story. Being able to fight by your side would be really cool. Next up we get some scenes of a spectre type enemy and a crawler in combat with the gas mask player, once again both being in the elven location. They honestly seem pretty terrifying, but we also see a new grenade launcher type weapon being used to exercise one of the spirits, so that's comforting. 
Also, the gas mask player here is seen equipped with a new scrappy looking sword, as well as the basic SMG from the first game. The following scenes are really enthralling. We see the three players in a fight with an infested Ravager. As Nate H commented about on my last video, it seems our time away from Yesha has allowed the Root to overrun it. We saw glimpses of this already in Remnant 1, as we see with the Root Horror hiding in the Curio Room. Since the Yesha Guardian was killed by the Devourer, the Root were able to enter without any resistance. Now seeing a Ravager-type beast infested with the Root, it shows how overwhelming it can be if left unchecked. In this fight, we can also see the long gun and handgun being used by the cowboy player. They are wielding the hunting rifle from Remnant 1 with a large revolver on their hip. Very complementary to the cowboy aesthetic. We can also see that they are wielding a different design of the scrapbacks from Remnant 1. It looks a bit shinier than the original. The Root Ravager fight looks incredible. I can't wait to see how it plays out in-game. The second to last section of the trailer revisits the character clad in crimson. A zoomed out shot from earlier reveals a beautiful arena with gold trimming and large glass windows. If the elven giant from earlier is the moon, I definitely get a sun vibe from this boss. Their location at the top of this tower and flame-based attacks lead me to that comparison. The gas mask player is also shown to be wielding a light machine gun here, which I cannot wait to get my hands on. Can I also just say how cool the segment where the player is surrounded by fire is? This right here is my most anticipated boss fight for the sequel. The trailer concludes with a reveal at the return of Many Faces. For those who haven't played Kronos or Kronos Before the Ashes, Many Faces was the Guardian of Yesha. It was defeated by the Devourer, which left the planet open to being invaded by the Root. Players with a keen eye may remember this site from the first phase of the Root Horror Boss. A statue of Many Faces with a large Root tumor attached to it. Whether or not this Root-controlled Many Faces is directly related to this instance from the first game is yet to be disclosed. Either way, I am pumped to get a rematch with this Guardian in the sequel. Wow, that was a lot to discuss for a two-minute trailer. I genuinely have not been this excited for a game announcement in years, and I am glad many of you expressed similar sentiments in the comments of my last video. I want to end this video with a question that I'll set up a poll for in a community post. Now that Remnant 2 was announced, should I make a video covering Kronos, the prequel to Remnant? I recently completed it and was wondering if you would all be interested in seeing a should you play sort of video talking about the game. That's all I've got for now. Thank you again so much for the support on the last video. I can't wait to see what Gunfire delivers us when the game finally drops. Take it easy, everyone.